All right, so um, welcome everyone. Welcome to session two of our uh, Learn Chatbot series in MMIO. So um, before we start, um, let's have a little recap what we have discussed yesterday. So yesterday we have discussed um, about the messenger policy, what it is and how we can get around it. I mean, how we can apply it in, in a way that it is safe for us to send messages to our subscribers. Um, to review, messenger policy in a nutshell is simply the, the time limit of Facebook or in Messenger wherein you can send a messages to your subscribers. So basically, once your subscriber um, engaged with your page by sending a message, you have up to 24 hours um, to send a message, even if it is a promotional message to your subscriber. And after that, um, you are going to use message tags. Um, we have four message tags, the post purchase update, um, event update, account uh, update, and the human agent. For the human agent, um, you are you can you can send promotional content, but it it should not be um, a uh, Facebook does not allow us to use human agent tag on our automation. We can only use um, human agent tag on live chat. So by the way, you can go to live chat feature by going to um, MMIO Facebook and Instagram, and then go to live chat feature. So let me sh let me share with you the um, our screen. So are you are you seeing the screen now, guys? The MMIO screen dashboard. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. Um, yeah. So um, again, uh, human agent tag. So MMIO uses human agent tag only on Facebook and Instagram, and then go to live chat feature. So if you go to uh, live chat feature by default. Um, it is a human agent tag, meaning you can follow up seven days um, to all who have messaged your page. You can you can send a a flow only inside the live chat. So Facebook does not allow us to send sequence or scheduled messages to your subscribers if you use human agent tag. So another way you can send safely to your subscribers is by using Facebook ads. We have also discussed yesterday how you can um, connect. Uh, how, what are the tools in chatbot, MMIO chatbot, where you can connect your chat, your, your Facebook ads using um, JSON, using um, payload ID and uh, m.me link. Um, we have also discussed how you can connect your page, connect your account, enable your page, and then how you can build your first um, chatbot. So let's go to chatbot builder. So Facebook and Instagram um, chatbot builder, and then we are going to choose the page that we used yesterday so that we can build up on it. All right. So this is the, uh, the, the one that we have used yesterday or one that we have created yesterday. Let me go to the date. OK. All right. Test chatbot automation. So yeah, that is the flow that we have created yesterday. Um, let's just open up this flow. All right. So um, to review, we have discussed how you can create a text element, how you can edit your um, elements um, label, which is this one. You can change this anytime. Hello there. So this is um, useful if you want to organize your messages so that later on, we are, when you are going to use the same flow for your automation, such as, uh, such as um, sequences, notifications, um, it's easier to pinpoint what specific message you're going to send on your flow. So we have also discussed this, copy the bot payload, um, m.me link, and, the, and then the JSON code. And then the typing delay, we have already discussed that. And then what are the differences in buttons and in quick reply? We have also discussed um, how you can connect messages to one another and create a sequence of uh, messages by connecting the next step. And also we have discussed the triggers. What are the different types of triggers such as get started trigger and the keyword trigger? 
um, basically the the trigger trigger element you can connect it to any of your messages um, on the flow and then we have discussed how you can add this um, it, uh, this is a generic element you can connect uh, you can add an image a title and a description to that image and if you want multiple cards or multiple generic cards to be connected and then um, the subscriber would just would just um, swipe left and right then you can use the carousel element so we have also discussed how you can do this and um, adding images and the best practices in using a video for your chatbot so basically we have discussed two types of um, videos that you can use in your chatbot the first is the the manual upload of your video this is limited to 50 megabytes only and, and um, you cannot upload long videos with high quality so by default um, you should use low quality video and um, a small sized video but if you want to use um, if you want to send a video to your subscribers that are long example two hour long video um, uh, example a large video to make two gigabytes of video what you can use is the Facebook media element so basic, basically to do this you need to upload your high quality video first on your Facebook page um, by the way the Facebook page must be the same Facebook page that you have used on your chatbot flow upload your video there copy the video URL on your Facebook page and then paste that video on your Facebook media. And then that's it. Um, you would be able to send um, videos to your subscribers quickly and with high quality. So yeah, that's, this, that's the discussion yesterday. And um, we have done a lot of testing. Um, and also we have... Um, we have um, differentiated the different types of trigger, a uh, keyword trigger to be specific. Um, we have discussed the difference between white type uh, keyword trigger, the match type keyword trigger, and the strict type keyword trigger. Um, yeah. So right now we are gonna build up on what we have discussed yesterday. Um, so um, let's start with a new flow. I think we need to start with a new flow here. So to create a new flow, just click create new flow button and let's say new flow session two. Okay, new flow session two. Now, um, the first feature that I would like to um, introduce to you on our concession is the active bot persona or the persona feature. So the persona feature is is the feature where in you can display a different um a different avatar on your um on, on your mobile phone so by default when you are when you're sending a message to your subscriber in messenger um the default persona or the default logo that they would see is your page logo and the, the, the name would be the name of your facebook page you can change that actually to a different um, to a different logo to a different uh, persona. Um, all you have to do is as assign a different active persona here. So let me read first the warning that Facebook has given us or the information. Um, but persona are only shown on Messenger app. All right, it is only shown on um, mobile devices. Facebook did not allow us to send um, or to use bot personas on uh, on on your laptop or on your um, or on your um, desktop dashboard browsers. So you can only or your subscribers would only be able to see your bot persona inside their um, mobile phones. Uh, for it is only available on iOS and Android apps. So just download. Uh, I believe everybody has, who, who uses Messenger um, have a separate Messenger app. And then inside that, that Messenger app or in, uh, yeah, it, it, in Messenger app, um, we can display a different persona, a different um, image, a different avatar when sending a message. So to create a persona, just click Create New. I mean, cl first click the bot persona feature, which is located here. 
the one that I'm pointing here. Click that. And then after, after doing that, click here, create new. And then we are going to use a different name. Example is John Doe. So that is the persona that we are going to use. And then we can upload a persona profile picture here or persona avatar image. So for the um, persona avatar image, you can you can use your, um, your actual picture, but I highly suggest for privacy purposes, um, it's better to use um, an avatar image that represents your persona. So um, example, we can use, um, Let's let's go to our um, uh, let, let's let's uh, choose an image here. Okay, example we can use this image. So yeah, um, it is not the exact um, representation. Uh, it is not my profile or my actual picture, but it represents the persona that we are giving to our bot. So example, we are naming our bot Jenny, or we are naming our bot John. So um, it's better, or it, it it provides better user experience once when once we give a better persona to our bot. All right. So each flow, each flow, you can assign a different bot persona. It's really up to you. You can have many bot persona on your page. Um, just don't make it too many that it becomes confusing to the user. So I suggest um, create only up to one to two persona so that it doesn't get confusing to your subscriber uh, when they are uh, messaging with your page. So basically the purpose of bot persona is to differentiate differentiate um, uh, the, the, the persona that our user has been to is, is talking with. So if we don't use persona, our subscriber would not know if they are talking to a bot or if they are talking to a human. Uh, our subscriber wouldn't know that um, because we are using the same logo, we are using the same name on our chat flow, on our chat. But if we use a persona, um, our subscribers would know if they are now talking to an agent or now they are talking to, or they are still talking to a bot. So um, I, I, I suggest that you create a persona per agent or example, you have a team member. And on each team member, you want to have, uh, you want your team members to, to, um, to, to chat with your customers. And each team member should have a different um, persona so that each customer would know that they were talking, example, they were talking to Jenny or they were talking to John or they were talking to Mark or they were talking to a bot. So that's the purpose of the uh, bot persona. And it's easy to build. So let's say I want to use John D. This is my first persona. So this is a bot. So we can use um, um, we can use the bot field here so that our subscriber would know that this is a bot. All right. So after creating your buyer pers your your uh, bot persona, you can assign your bot persona here. All right. So. Assigning a bot persona for a flow is very simple. All you have to do is just, you know, you just choose your buyer persona on, on the top part of our flow. So right now, the active bot persona for this specific chatbot flow is our new bot or our new bot persona. It's John D. So um, I won't be able to show you what it looks like because I'm using browser now. Um, but what I can do is, if you have a mobile phone with you, I can send the m.me link to our chat, to our chat group, and then you would be able to see um, the bot persona. So yeah, let's say hello, um, first name. I am John D, and I am uh, a bot. I will assist you with um, with your um, queries or your questions. So let me save this first, and then I'm gonna give the m that 
bit.me link to our chat group chat and what i want you to do is open your mobile phone open your mobile phone if you are using your mobile phone click your group chat or click our group chat and then um once you click the group chat uh, well, once you click the m.me link that i have just sent now um, you would be able to see the active bot persona which is uh, john d all right so again each flow you can assign a different bot persona in each flow it's really up to you so the next feature that i will, that i want to show you um is okay so we have already discussed the text carousel generic facebook media image gif video file um file if you want to send a file to your subscriber all you have to do is create a file element so this is useful if you want to send example a free pdf to your subscriber so if you're familiar with um, email marketing what email marketing usually what what email marketing people usually does is they give um a a reward to people um who who opted in to their to their um to, to their email campaign or email sequence that reward could be in in in, in any form or a digital information form um, example a pdf file or a powerpoint or an image or any 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 um digital file uh digital asset that that, that is useful for them so you can use that as well on messenger so let's say i want to give a free pdf to people but they have to subscribe to my messenger um chatbot first and then i would have 24 hours to send a promotion promotional message to to our subscriber so i can upload my pdf on on the file element here and then example once they click on the button let's say get my free pdf okay example i have a button in here and then once they click the get my free pdf button um the system will send the pdf that we have attached here so let's say i want to upload a pdf file here or an image file so let me choose uh okay how about this i'm gonna i want to add that um that pdf file so after after doing that once once the customer or once your subscriber um clicks on this uh button they will receive that file all right so that's how easy it is to to send a file to your subscriber the next fe feature that i want to show you is um the um uh otn or the one-time notification feature okay so how does one-time notification feature work let me first show you um the blog that we have prepared for you so we have the question here okay so the question is um thanks for exploring the capabilities of receiving and sending data using webhooks if this is something that can be done opens a whole new world for possibilities integration with Pub Zapier. yes of course um using the http um, um element you can actually get data and send data to whatever whatever um whatever connection or whatever um, integrations that you want as long as they have an api you can actually communicate with them so that's a powerful feature that you can use um, if you want to to make your chatbot even more powerful so we'll be able to discuss um, webhooks and http request later on so let's first discuss um, the i was discussing the um, the otn or the one-time notification feature so let me um, i'm just going to show you how it is done here okay the one-time notification feature all right so this is a sample um flow that uses um one-time notification notification feature so by the way guys a one-time notification feature or um the otn um basically you can send um, using OTN, you would be able to send a promotional message 
or a promotional content, whether it is it is um, a discount coupon code, um, an invitation to an event, or uh, an offer for free PDF or whatever, um, an announcement for a another another prizes. So any any promotional message it is allowed, um, but there's a catch. The catch is you can only send one um, one message per notification or per token. So the workflow here is you are going to send a no, um, token approval request or one-time notification request to your subscriber. And once that subscriber approves your um, notification request, then the system or messenger will provide you a token. That is, the token rep represents the consent of the user. So you have one consent, meaning you have one token, and that one token, um, you can use that token in the span of one year. It has an, it has a, a, an expiration date of one year. If you did not use your um, to consent token for one year, it will expire, um, and you would have to um, request another token. So basically, you can create, uh, you can send as many requests, as many notification requests to your subscriber as you want. Um, if the subscriber approves all your notification, then you can send. Um, you have you have a lot of token to use, um, so that you can send a promotional content to your subscriber. So how do we request? How can we request a um, an OTN, uh, one-time notification request to your subscriber? So this is uh, the basic flow. First is you will have an intro text and then the build your OTN campaign by using the OTN element or the one-time notification element. And then lastly, you are going to send your thank you message. So to build an OTN flow, um, you need three elements, the intro text, OTN campaign, and your thank you message. So let's build that here. So to build, um, instead of file, I'm going to use OTN. Um, uh, inform me or, or, yeah, let's just say get OTN, all right, for testing purposes. So this will serve, this will serve as our intro text. And then... Oops. Yeah, uh, it should be this one. Sorry about that. It should be this one. Um, um, using the intro text, we can only connect the intro text on our continue message because it should be, when you build an OTN, it should be a message chain. So to build a message chain, you should uh, use the continue to next step um, um, socket. So yeah, so I will assist you in your questions um get notified so you are going to configure your otn so click your otn and then um you if you have an existing one-time notification you can use that here so i have already created a previous notification request but i want to show you how you can create a brand new notification request so what you need to do is you need to com complete this phrase get notified so um when new feature is released or example get notified when promo period starts and then what is my otn name so one time notification name you'd be able to um, remember or identify the specific um, notification later on once you are going to use your otn campaign so let's just say that this is my session, uh, learn, learn chatbot OTN. Okay, learn chatbot OTN. Okay, and after that, we are going to build or send a thank you message. Thank you for um, approving um, the OTN. We will inform you once um once the promo promotional promo period 
starts. Okay. And after that, um, we are going to save our flow. So let's just change the label here, OTN test or OTN welcome. One time notification welcome. So um, um, for me, um, it's really, it's, it's best practice. It's a good practice to always include a one-time notification on, on your flows. You would never know uh, when you would need that OTN or, or that one-time notification campaign or OTN token. So keep in mind that when using OTN, um, you should send a relevant message. So example, on my OTN campaign here, I said that this one-time notification campaign is about the promo when the promo period starts. So the message that I would send on my OTN, once I send a, a, a one-time notification campaign to my subscribers later on, so example, I have 2,000 subscribers that have approved my OTN campaign or one-time notification request. So I can send a promotional message to 2,000 subscribers anytime I want, as long as it is within the span of one year. But the, but the, um, but the thing that you, you should keep in mind is the message that you, su you should send must be related to the, um, to the OTN title that you, have, um, that you have created here. So just keep that in mind. Do not send an OTN campaign or a, a different message a completely different offer from versus the versus from what the the user has originally approved all right so basically you are just um just think about it you are just fulfilling your promise you promise to send or to inform your users once your promo period starts so once your promo period starts you should inform them you should not use that approval to send an irrelevant message so yeah, that's a warning, guys. Uh, don't abuse the OTN campaign, but do not neglect OTN. Always use OTN as much as possible if you have a flow. Um, do not forget to include an OTN message if it is applicable. Um, you would never know um, when is the time that you would use your OTN. So you could make it, you could make your OTN title here more generic. Um, for example, when promo period starts. Let's just say when we have a new promo. So I did not say what specific promo. So when we have a new promo. So um, basically, I did not spe I did not specify what is the specific promo. So um, that means that I have a leeway. I can use the token in a lot of ways. I can just build up a new promo and then use the token because I did not specify what promo that I am going to send. So that is another use case to make your OTN a little bit freer, or you can be a more, more free to, to use or to compose a message for your specific one-time notification approval. So let's, let's save this. And then we are going to open Messenger. We are going to test um, this OTN campaign. So I'm going to click copy m.me link. So um, I'm going to use another browser here my favorite browser so far, Microsoft Edge. For me, for me, it, I, think, I think it's a little bit faster than Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge. Well, that's for me. It, it, we have our own uh, preferences, but yeah. Um, I really like Microsoft Edge browser. Have you guys used this? Have you, have you already used um, Microsoft Edge? Okay, let me just zoom zoom in on this one. Okay, great. All right, so this is our um, chat bot. So hi, um, Calvin, I am John D, I am, I am a bot. I will assist you with your questions. So uh, as you can see the, the logo that appeared here and the name, yeah. So the logo that appeared here is still our page logo. Um, we did not, uh, the, the, the bot feature or the bot persona that we have assigned previously on our chatbot flow did not, did not take effect because I am using a laptop now. 
um, as I have said, as I have clarified earlier, the bot persona feature only works on a messenger app. It's, it only works on mobile phone, whether it is an iPhone or iOS or um, an Android phone. Any Android phone will work as long as you use the messenger app. So, um, yeah, so I have already sent the link to you guys. You can click that link, open up your mobile phone, click that link, and then you would be able to um, see what it looks like, the, the bot persona feature. So let's see, get notified when we have a new promo. So if, if I click notify me, um, that means that um, the system will generate one token for this specific approval. And since I have one token, I, I can send one message anytime I want in the span of one year to this specific subscriber. So let's say that I, example, I have already um, sent my approval or I have already collected 2,000 approvals or 2,000 tokens. How am I going to use this? Sorry about that. How am I going to use this? To use your token, all you have to do is create a chat broadcast. So go back to your um, Marketing Master IO dashboard, go to Facebook and Instagram, and then click chat broadcast. And then it's important to um, specify the same page. You must use the same page, um, the, the same Facebook page um, as the one that you have uh, you, uh, used to create your chat flow and your um, OTN campaign or your one-time notification campaign. Again, go back here. All right, and then choose your page. Okay, this is the page. I know it should be in chat broadcast. I'm sorry. Facebook and Instagram, and then go to chat broadcast. Choose your page. And then after that, um, create a new chat broadcast. So once you have created a new chat broadcast, um, what you would need to do next is um, on the use OTN token portion here. Um, you need to specify that you are going to use an OTN token. And then you are going to specify which OTN campaign um, you are going to use. So example, I'm, I want to use the Learn Chatbot OTN. Um, so the Learn Chatbot OTN, um, we already have um, um, an approval for that. So last subscribe interaction, we can, we can already remove this. Okay, we can already remove that um, that filter because OTN. Once you send an OTN campaign, um, you don't have to. You are not bounded to the 24-hour policy because you are free to send any promotional message whenever you want because you are using an OTN token. Okay, so we have two subscribers. So let me. We can check actually. Uh, go back to Facebook and Instagram, and then go to your go to chat broadcast. I want to show you where to check um, how many tokens and which subscribers have already approved your OTN request. So go to my chat broad, go to my OTNs, go, go on this tab. So this is located on your chat broadcast. Okay, chat broadcast. And then um, uh, Facebook and Instagram, chat broadcast, my OTN tab and then learn chatbot OTN, okay? So if we view the OTN subscribers, we have two subscribers here. Oh, so as you can see, the status is it, it, it is available, okay? So meaning um, these approvals or these tokens, this is the token ID, and these are the subscribers that have approved our token request. These tokens are still available. So we can still send a message to uh, the subscribers. So yeah, so just imagine you have 3,000 or 2,000 subscribers in here, um, which you can send a message to. So you can you can now go back to Facebook and Instagram, um, chat broadcast, my broadcast, create a new broadcast. Sorry about that. Um, 
After that, specify that you are going to use an OTN and then select your OTN um, campaign or the, the learn chatbot OTN and then just remove the filter. So this is the filter rules. What, what this does is it protects it protects your um, it protects your page by restricting um, your your chat broadcast to only send within the uh, to, to the subscribers who have engaged with your page within the 24 hour window span so um, it, it, it it ensures that you would not violate the messenger policy but since we are using the OTN here we can remove actually this restraint and then yeah you can you can now send a chat broadcast to your subscribers okay so that's how easy it is to use an OTN token collect an OTN token by um, by attaching your your OTN campaign on your flow so example you have a get started button you can actually uh, have a specific example a quick reply there um, um, what you can do is um, you can be creative in in collecting your OTNs so if you if you're really serious in doing messenger marketing you should make it a into a habit make it a habit always it should be your goal to collect um, to collect OTNs or one-time notification tokens. So that is your currency. That is your asset in, in messenger marketing. You can create as many OTN tokens as you want, and then you can, you can just um, request those tokens to your subscribers. Request an OTN um, approval. Okay. So yeah, be creative. Uh, my suggestion is... Um, during the start of the flow, uh, example on your get started portion, you can actually have um, a quick reply here. I'm sorry. We can have a button here. Um, let's say that I'm going to use this. Add another text. And then I'm going to have a quick reply here. Get awesome, awesome gift. Okay, get an awesome gift. And then after that, you can actually um, connect this to your OTN message. Hello. Uh, to get your gift, to get your gift, um, please uh, click, okay, uh, click, uh, to get your gift, click um, notify me button below and then you have a notification here so once they click the notify me button um, you can send your gift here so what you can do is um, you have a thank you message here and then you can add a file example you can add your file here so with this flow this is your welcome message welcome to our page Let's say welcome to our page and then your first name then yeah so after that you can add a trigger a trigger here let's say that this will become a get started flow all right so this is the message that i'm going to send to people who have a message in my page for the first time and then on that flow um, example, I have a lot more options here. Um, contact support. Example, um, get products. Get products. And then um, just make sure that you have some very intriguing button in there. Example, get awesome gift. And then you are going to uh, entice them to approve your notification request. So that later on you can send a chat broadcast or notification campaign to them in a safe manner. Um, you you won't have to worry about being banned. You won't have to worry about messenger policy because once you use an OTN token, you are basically safe to message your subscribers as long as it is related, technically related or reasonably related to the to the OTN message that you have created here. Okay. So example, um, contact support, you have a message here. 
and then you have also a message here and then yeah hello and then hello here okay so if you have this flow then this is uh, another best practice that um, I, I I encourage you to apply so the best practice is always have a little button on your get started flow always have a little button in there enticing your subscribers or um, having your subscriber uh, you can game gamify or gamification or have a reward system wherein um, they will be rewarded if they click the notify me button so so once you have collected enough um, enough um, notification then that is your asset because you don't have to spend a single um, dollar uh, on Facebook ads to send a broadcast safely. All you have to do is just send your notification token. Okay, so that's how Messenger notification works. So let's go back. I'm going to show you another feature here. So another feature, session two. Okay, so let's review what we have discussed. So we have already discussed the how to create a text, the carousel, generic, Facebook media, image, GIF, video, file. So HTTP, it's a little bit more advanced, but we are going to get to that, all right? And then user input, OTN, we have already discussed this. Condition, action triggers, time gap. All right, so the next discussion would be um, a, a very rela related, um, uh, it would become a series of features that would become very helpful and very powerful once you master how, how you can use this. So we have uh, the, the, the trio, okay? So I'm gonna call this the trio feature. The trio feature is the user input, condition, and actions, okay? So these are the trio, um, the trio um, elements that I urge uh, you to master using actions, conditions, and user input. Because if you master this, um, I can say that you have you you have upgraded your skills on on chatbot marketing. Um, you are on another another level. Um, you are now on a uh, on a semi semi advanced um, portion of the of the, the scale, so a more advanced usage of um, the chatbot marketing feature is the HTTP request. So HTTP request um, you need to you you need you would need a little bit of um, understanding how API works or the HTTP web works. So an HTTP request is used to get data and to send or push data to third-party integrations. Example, you want to push data to Zapier, push data to Publi, or example, you want to get data to your CRM from from your CRM, get data from your from your um, API funnel. Um, you can use that using HTTP. So you get data and then use that data inside your flow. So that is a little bit more advanced, but it is a must-have skill if you want to upgrade your uh, messenger marketing um, um, talent. Uh, let, let's just call that weaponry, okay? Your arsenal. Okay, let's start. Before you can um, do this, before we can um, uh, start, let's just first... Um, um, have a little uh, uh, testing here. I'm going to first test the user input. So let's first uh, test how user inputs work. So user input, um, this is the element that you would need. User input, where are you? Okay. So user input, this is the element um, that allows you to get data or to store data. So basically, treat user input as your storage. This is where you can store data from your subscriber. So example, a subscriber types or sends a, cer a, sends a certain message. 
and you want to store that certain message so that you can use that information later on on your flow or maybe you can use maybe you want to store that a message or information on a on an excel file or on a on google sheet so user input is your um is your is your tool for that so let me just show you how it is done what is your favorite pet okay this is this is the first question so what is your favorite pet and then you are going to connect continue the next step to your user input so you are building a message sequence or, sorry it's not message sequence it is a series a series of message so once again as i have discussed yesterday for those who have not attended yesterday um once you build uh once you use the continue to next step button you are you are in effect building a message series so this message series is treated as one continuous message by facebook so the user inf input feature is uh is a message a type of message series so you should connect your user input to to the uh to this to this socket the continue to next step socket and um, let's build or let's create a brand new user input. So um, if you have an existing custom variable, uh, you can just use that. So by the way, um, a custom variable is basically a storage data or the name, the name of the storage. Okay, so that you can recall or you can you can you you would be able to uh, get that data. It's easy to get which specific data you, data you want by recalling the name of that storage so um, let's let's create a new custom variable so let's just say that the this custom variable is favorite or fave um let's just say um session session two i uh, know session two favorite pet okay Okay, got it. So this is the name of my custom variable, session two favorite pet. And I want this data to be dynamic. So dynamic data, it means that the data would change depending on the user input. But if you use a, a fixed or predefined data, it means that the data would be coming from you. The data would come from you, and then that data is fixed. But if the data would be coming from your subscriber instead of you, instead of you, um, then use the dynamic data type so you can in also include um, a google sheet integration but let's just discuss that later on for now let's just keep things simple so i'm not i'm not going to use a google sheet just yet i'm just going to use a a, a, nat a native variable storage all right so yeah i mean i'm this is my custom variable session two favorite pet okay and after that I, i'm going to ask another question here what's your uh, uh, let's say why is why is and then use custom variable here so to use what i'm doing now is i am going to use the data that was given to me or but what that was typed by the user on the previous question i'm going to use what the user has typed and put it on my flow so to do that you are going to use custom variable which is here click custom click custom here and then choose the custom variable that you have created earlier so I'm, in this case i'm using session two favorite pet i'm going to add that so why is this one your favorite pet okay so this one this custom variable with will be replaced with the actual data that the subscriber has typed later on so why is your favorite pet and then the user would answer um, another user input here and then let's create a new one session two um, reason i'm gonna use this as reason why that's my um, that's my data or that's my custom variable so whenever the user answers the the reason for why that is their favorite pet it will be stored on the 
Session two, reason why custom variable. So and then send a message I see. So the reason is, and then add the reason. So, so this is your reason. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so just let's keep it simple for now. Let's just use this series. You can you can actually add more questions here. You can build a survey. So later I'm, I will, I'm gonna show you how you can how you can build a survey inside of Messenger using buttons, using quick replies, using and using user input and Google Sheet. So later I'm gonna I'm gonna discuss that as well. Let's just build upon let's just uh, take it step by step. I'm gonna save this. And then we are going to um, trigger. I want to trigger this flow using a keyword. So let's just say um, this is my pets. Okay. I'm going to trigger this with a keyword so that I can test my flow easily. So my keyword now is pet. So now I would be able to trigger or test my flow using a keyword. So once I go back here, message type pet, then we uh, the the flow should start. What's your uh, what is your favorite pet? Let's say my favorite pet is dog. And then the next it would send us another message. Why is dog your favorite pet? Because it is man's best friend. Okay because it is man's best friend. Okay, after that, um, it will send us another message. I see, so the, this, is, this is your reason because it is man's best friend, sounds good, all right? So that's how you use the, um, the, um, the, the, the user input and the custom variable together uh, when, when building your flow. Now let's, let's uh, add a little more complexity here. What if I want to store this inside of Google Sheet. How am I going to do that? First, you must have a Google Sheet. So let's go to Google and I'm going to create a new Google Sheet and then I'm going to integrate that Google Sheet on my chatbot. So, okay, I'm going to open a new browser here. Okay, new browser. Where are you, my new browser? Okay, good. So Google Sheets. Sorry about that. Google Sheets. Okay. And then after that, um, I'm going to add new Google Sheet here. I'm going to start with blank, a blank Google Sheet first. Okay. And then I am going to name this Google Sheet. Let's say that the name is Session 2. Session two, uh, pet record. Okay, so this is my, um, this is now my um, Google Sheet. Now, what I want to do is I want to attach or I want to integrate this Google Sheet on my chatbot flow. So how do we do that? So to do that, let's go back to our um, dashboard here. And then let's, since this is already saved, I'm going to get, uh, I can, I can uh, edit this later on. And then what you need to do is go to your bot sheets, okay? So this is located on your um, Facebook and Instagram, chatbot flow builder, and then bot sheets, okay? So after that, go to bot sheets tab and then click add import new Google sheet, okay? So after that, this is the system account or the system email that uh, you would need to give an editor access. So how do we add an editor access to this email? All you have to do is just right-click this, right-click the email, go back to your, um, go back to your uh, Google Sheet, click share, and then add an editor access to this email. So that's how easy it is. Add, add this email, and then make sure that it is editor. 
Okay? This is editor access. And also make sure that you click on the gear and all of this is checked. This is checked and this is checked. Okay? Once that is uh, okay, we can now click send. Okay? Share anyway. So after doing that, we have given editor access to uh, to the to the system. Um, what needs to be done next is we are going to add or we are going to share. So copy the sharing link. So basically, you click the copy link here on your Google Sheet, copy the link, and then go back to your chatbot flow uh, to your dashboard, and then um, enter the URL or the, the sharing URL, the sharing link of your Google Sheet here. So now. Um, your Google Sheet is importing. So that's that's how easy it is. Okay, now, so we have our Google Sheet here, session two, pet record. So this is our Google Sheet name. We can now go back to our, um, uh, no, not yet. We cannot go back there yet. What we need to do is we need to attach the, the Google Sheet on our, um, on our custom variables. Remember, we have created two custom variables earlier, right? So these are the custom variables that we have created earlier. This one, session two, favorite pet, and then session two, reason why. So when we created these uh, custom variables earlier, we did not enable the Google Sheet integration for this one. So now, since we have a Google Sheet that is available, we can now add the Google Sheet integration for our custom variables. So basically, again, um, the, the custom variable is your storage. So by default, the storage is inside the MMIO system, all right? But you can add another storage, which is the Google Sheet storage. You can store it in both ways. It will now be stored on MMIO system and on your Google Sheet. So um, to do that, simply edit your um, session to custom variable and then enable your Google Sheet here and then choose the Google, Google Sheet that you have recently imported. Choose the sheet name and then the column. So I'm going to use column D here and then click OK. And then for the reason why, um, I'm going to enable Google Sheet, select the Google Sheet that we have recently imported. And then for this one, I'm going to choose column E. So basically, um, for column D, that is the, the name of the pet or the, yeah, the name of the pet. And then column E, the reason why. So I'm going to show you later on what, what this would look like. So I'm going to click confirm. Okay, now it is confirmed. We can now go back to our flow. So let's trigger again. Pet. Trigger pet again. Okay, what is your favorite pet? Now, in this case, I'm going to use cat. Okay, why is cat your favorite pet? Because it purrs. Okay. And after that, it will send again another message. And then um, if all things goes well, uh, we should see this stored on our Google Sheet. So let's go to our Google Sheet now. And no, it is not stored here. I don't know what happened, but it should be stored. Ah, all right, all right. I, I think I know what happened. We need to edit our flow. Edit our flow here, okay? edit our flow and make sure that this is already um, here because the changes that we have made in there should be reflected on our flow as well. So I'm going to save our flow again here. So after saving the flow, let's, let's, trigger, uh, let's trigger again our, um, our flow. Pet, what is your favorite pet? Let's say um, rabbit. Wrong spelling. Okay. And then I'm gonna sh it will send us another message because it hops, okay? All right, so 
If I did things correctly, we should be able to see it here. And as you can see, we have a new entry on our Google Sheet. So yeah, um, notice that the first, <clears throat> the first column here is reserved for the PSID or the, this is what they call PSID or the subscriber ID of our, of our subscriber. So this column is reserved for the first name of our subscriber and column C is reserved for the last name of our subscriber. Um, that's the reason why um, column A, B, and C are reserved. You won't, you won't be able to use column A, B, and C on your chatbot. If you go back to your custom variable in your chatbot, go to your chatbot here. If we go back to our um, custom variables and if we edit our custom variables here, you would not be able to see A, B, C, A, B, and C on the choices. It always starts with column D because column A, B, and C are reserved for um, um, the PSID or the subscriber ID, the first name and the last name of our subscriber. So yeah, um, you can add more um, data here. So if we go back here, we can actually add more data on our flow. We can add more data here, um, but uh, I think we need to, uh, I'm gonna show you next is how you can create surveys, okay? I think it's better to create a new flow. Um, sample messenger survey. Okay. Okay, sample messenger survey. And then um, let's build a survey here. So what is your name? Uh, no, uh, the name is already specified. The age, uh, I, the, 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 the last name is already specified. What we need to ask is, um, hello, first name, um, click button below to begin survey. Click button below to begin survey. Okay, so the button would be begin survey. Begin the survey and then go to next step. And then for the survey, let's ask our first question. So what would be our first question? The first question would be, what is your email? So what is your email? Okay, so for this one, um, we are going to use quick reply. So um, add a quick reply. And then on the quick reply, we have an option there wherein you would, you would be able to automatically collect an email or a phone number from your subscriber as long as they have provided that information as public. It should be public on their profile. If they have, if they, if their, if their profile privacy settings is, uh, is hidden, then you won't be able to re retrieve um, Facebook will not be able to give the email and the phone number of the, your subscriber if their settings is set to private. But if their email and phone number is set to public, then you would be able to collect that. All right. Okay. Email. And then you are going to use user input here. So again, um, we have, we have um, a, um, a quick reply. And then we are going to store the email of our subscriber to a user input. So as I have told you earlier, our user input is a storage. So I'm going to create a new one. Let's just say that session two, session two email. So this is the email field dynamic. This time I'm going to enable the Google Sheet. And then um, after enabling the Google Sheet, Okay, select the Google Sheet session two, pet record. That's the Google Sheet that we have recently imported. Sheet one, and then I'm gonna uh, choose D. What is your email? Next question is, what is your phone number? What is your phone number? And then um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use quick reply here, phone. 
and then use user input and then um, create new session to phone and then enable the google sheet select the google sheet that we have recently imported sheet number one and uh be 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 careful uh, you should not use the same row or the same column that you have uh, recently used because then it would override it would override the value uh, that uh, the subscriber has inputted. Just, just, just make sure that the, the column that you have used here is different from the column that you have used here. And after that, um, let's just say, um, what is your favorite pet? Okay, and after that, um, we are not going to use buttons. We are not going to use quick reply. So since this is a an open ended question, um, we are we are gonna use uh, message um, series a series of message. So connect continue to next step. Use user input, and then the custom variable that we have recently used. I think um the 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 custom variable here is set to column D, that would be a problem because it would override the column D that we have set for the email. Um, what should I do here? I think we need to edit that. Um, I can edit that later on. I'm just gonna use, in order for us to be faster, I, I can use um, pet here and then pet record sheet and then a D E F. Okay, I'm gonna use F here, column F, and then uh, Y. Okay, and then this is also an open-ended question, so I'm gonna use user. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, a series of message. Continue to next step. Uh, for for this one, I'm gonna build another uh, session to why enable the google sheet session two and then d e f g so let's use g here okay and then the last message is thank you thank you okay so um i think i need to i need to show you a, a another way here because i have already shown you how this works this one, I've already shown you how this works. But yeah, since I have already built it, I'm going to save this. And then after that, let's go back here. And then what I'm going to show you is how you can use buttons to create a survey. Um, yeah, let's go back here and trigger our flow again. Use pet. What is your favorite pet? Uh, did I save this correctly? Ah, yeah, so this is a different flow. I'm sorry. Uh, we should use a different trigger here. We should use a different trigger here, keyword, um, pet2. So this is my brand new flow, pet2. That is the keyword to trigger this new flow. So go back here. Oh, uh, pet2, it will not trigger the flow because this is an answer to the previous question. Okay, let's let's just finish this. Let's just finish the finish this flow. It uh, even if it is a keyword it will not trigger because you are still on the uh, on the series of message. So since the the, the flow is already complete um, we can already um, use this pet 2. What is your favorite pet? Oh, ah, yes, I did not. So this is, since we are using the previous keyword that we have used is a wide type keyword. Remember, the wide type keyword. The pet is, this one is a wide type keyword. Wide type means it, it, it will match uh, a, a keyword no matter if, if it is, even if it is just a part of the sentence. So since it, this is the first keyword, uh, it is the first keyword created versus the pet two keyword. That's why it was um, prioritized by the system. So what we need to do is we can either edit the, the pet keyword and make it 
into another keyword type. Example, I'm going to use strict type keyword or match type keyword. But for us to be faster, I think it would be better to just use a new a new keyword instead. So um, let's just say uh, flow two. Okay. For us to be faster, this is a faster way than just exiting and editing that flow, editing the keyword. So again, um, since we have engaged with the series, we need to complete this one because the system we will not um, will not uh, trigger the keywords because we are still on the survey. Why is bat because of Batman? Because of Batman. Okay. Okay. Now let's trigger our new flow. Flow two. Okay. Hi. Hello, Calvin. Click button below to begin the survey. Now I'm gonna click begin survey. We should uh, be able to see here. Uh, all right, what is your email? As you can see, we have an email here that is automatically generated by Facebook. So this email is the login email or the email that is used by this user to to uh, uh, to log in on their Facebook. So basically, you can add more than one email on your Facebook account. You can add multiple emails, but this one, uh, this is the the most recent email that uh, is usable for this Facebook account. That's why Facebook has generated that public email um, from the user. So if I am the user, what I can do is I can either click this. Um, after clicking that, then it will be stored on our Google Sheet, and then it would trigger another. What is your phone number? So as you can see in this one, there is no phone number here because um, on this Facebook profile, this specific Facebook profile did not register a phone number. All right. So remember that it is optional for users, for us Facebook users, to store or not to store our phone numbers on Facebook. If your subscriber did not store their phone number on Facebook, then you would not be able to get that. So uh, I'm going to show you the workaround later on. For now, let's just type our number here. This is the phone number. Let's just type whatever phone number is in here. Just type away. Okay, what is your favorite pet? Okay, um, let's just say bird. Okay, after that, our last question, why? Uh, tweet, tweet. After that, um, the thank you message. Thank you. All right. So let's go back to our, uh, to our, um, yeah, let's go back to, uh, um, to our uh, Google Sheet. As you can see here, the field has completely changed. So this is the, the, the ID, name, last name. This is the email address, the email address. This is the phone number. This is the answer to the first question and then the answer to the second question. Okay, so now let's let's make our flow a little bit more complex. Okay, so instead of open-ended question, what you can do is we can actually use buttons to 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 um, um, to so that the, the, the subscriber uh, wouldn't have to type. Okay, so example, what is your favorite pet? Let's apply example. This is a real estate. Um, campaign. So what type of house is your ideal? Okay. And then after that, what type of house is your ideal? So let's just say um, flat. Okay. That's the first choice. The second choice would be, okay. I don't know if that's the correct spelling, but let's just say that that's it. Okay, uh, example, we have our choices here. Remember, for quick replies for this one, you can add up to 11 choices. So this is good for surveys. Um, add, add more options in here if it is applicable. But for now, for us to be, uh, to be, so that we can save time, 
let's just uh, use three choices for this one. Okay. And after that, we are going to save each of these messages. So how are we going to do that? So what we can do is add our user input. Okay, user input and then user input. Well, I think it, it is much better to, yeah, I think it is it is much better to use a, um, it is much better to use, I think, yeah, yeah, user input is needed, sorry. User input and then another user input here. Let's just configure this user, user input first. Um, session two, house, house type. Okay, enable the Google Sheet. Sheet number two. So this is the this is the the email. Let D column D is the email. Column is the phone number. Then let's override F. We are going to use F as the house type. So we can clone this one and clone this one. Okay. And then add a text here. Okay. So this is another way to do it. Okay. Um, next is um another way to do this uh, this is the first way to do this another way to do this if you don't want to add a lot a lot of user input there is an option actually here on the actions element here on the actions element if you use action element there is an option here where we can modify or we can modify our custom variable so modify the custom variable add this to our action, and then set from quick reply, okay? Use set from quick reply here. Uh, use from set, uh, quick reply or button. And then we can remove this. I think this is a, a much cleaner way to do this. And then button here, button there, and button there, and then add your action here. All right, I think that's cleaner, okay? So after that, um, what is your budget? Budget. Okay, so example, what is your budget? And then let's just say another quick reply. Um, um, one hundred thousand dollars to Okay, 100 to $200,000. This is the first option. The second option is 200000 to uh, $200,000 to $500,000. Okay, the third option is $500,000 and up. Okay. And after that, let's add, let's point all of this quick reply on our next message. And then I'm going to duplicate this action flow, add it in here, and then let's modify. Oh, I have not created uh, uh, a, a custom variable for this. So let me create a custom variable first. Okay. Um, um, session two, budget. Session two, budget. And um, session two, pet record, Google Sheet. Column D is email. Column E is phone number. Column F is the house type, right? This is the house type. So I am gonna use G, right? If I remember correctly, did I, did I get it right? Sorry, my memory is not that good anymore. Yeah, this is, yeah, this, is this is D, E, a, B, C, D, E, F, F, we should choose F first. This is 
D E F G. Correct. This is yeah, I think I guess I guess I got it right. Yeah, I guess I got it right. So um budget modify modify and then I'm gonna use budget set from quick reply. All right. So this is for C se uh, session two house type. And this is for session two budget. And then um, for the thank you message. Okay, got it. And then I'm gonna send another flow here. These are your um, data or input. So email. Let's use a custom variable here, session to email. Okay, so this is the email. Phone, session to phone. Okay, uh, house type. The type of house is session to house type. And then budget, session to budget. Okay. So basically we are reviewing or we want the user to see if these are all correct. And then I'm gonna ask a question here. Um, are, are these correct? And then after that, I'm gonna add a button here. No. Okay. And then at the button here, yes. So are these correct? No and yes. So if it, if this is no, let's just have a little apology. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Please try again. And then let's let's redirect this to the first flow or to the first question. Okay. So um, if they click no, uh, if they click no, we we are going to say a little sorry and then start the question all over again back to the top and then if they say yes then we are going to add a gif gif here celebrate 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 okay uh yeah i'm gonna use this uh okay confirm change and then add a little text here hooray And then add a, a little emoji, party, party emoji. Okay, uh, celebrate, celebrate. Um, where is that? Party. So, yeah, I, I, I'm a little, uh, I don't want to uh, spend more time finding an emoji. Let's just save this for now. Okay. I'm gonna save and then yeah, let's try our flow. So review, um, this is how you can create a survey. First is let the user know that they are in the survey and then start your survey. First question at the Google Sheet, um, reserve a column for that, that is column D for the email. We use the quick reply uh, email. And then for the column E, this is column E, uh, we reserve this for the phone number, and then for this one, we used instead of op instead of an open ended uh, question, uh, we have uh, we have uh, choices here. We have set three choices for a user, and then all of the those choices would move uh, our user to the next question, and uh, we have an action here that saves the response of the user to our custom variable, which is session two. Um, and then let's let's just save this one. And then for the last one, we have another question here. And then uh, our, our choices is also three choices. It's about budget. And then we are going to say save the user input on our custom variable session two budget custom variable. And then we are going to review what the user has, has uh, inputted or the data that the user provided and then add 
uh, ask the user or confirm if the details are correct or no. Okay, go back here and configure or figure the flow, flow two. All right, let's begin the survey. The survey, what is your email? I'm going to provide my email. So even if they did not click their email, even if they typed their email, it will still be saved on your custom variable and on your Google Sheet. What is your phone number? So this is my phone number. OK. And after that, but what type of a house is your ideal? I'm going to say flat. And then next question, budget. What is the budget? I'm going to say this one. OK, and after that, um, review, the review of the de details. Got it. And then your email is this one. This is your phone number. The type is flat. The budget is this one. Are these correct? If I say no, if I say no, then it will trigger the sorry message. Sorry about that. Please try again. What is your email? And then, yeah, get over. The, the flow will restart again. What is your phone number? And then um, after that, uh, what type? I'm going to say this one. And then next question would be the budget. What is the budget? And then after that, I'm going to choose this one. And then it would confirm what are the results of our survey. Got it. And then the details this is the email correct the new phone number correct this is the new the new type and this is the new budget so i'm going to say yes this is correct and then it should send us the gif and the thank you message right so that's how easy it is to create a survey hooray so let's go back to our google sheet if all things worked well um we should be able to see the details here. And as you can see, yeah, the details are all correct. Boom. This is the uh, PSID or the ID of the subscriber. First name, last name, the email, the phone number, the, the type of the, yeah, the house type and then the budget. So um, these are all, uh, we, we simply use the, the quick reply. And then, um, yeah, I have already shown you how you can build this using our chatbot. Okay, let me go back to our um, flow. Yeah, where is my flow? Okay, I'm gonna share the screen again. So we have a very interesting question here. So the question from Clarence, so say if a user did not finish the whole process, would the system just record whatever they replied previously? Yeah, yeah. So the, the system will record uh, record uh, on the spot if the if the user uh, uh, clicks a, a choice or add, types a, 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 a inputs a data, it will be saved um, per per question. So um, what you can actually do is you can. You can follow up with the user. Example, they did not answer two of your questions. They did answer uh, two of your questions. What you can do is you can build a flow that, uh, that um, allows users to get back to that flow. So example, um, you can use messenger, uh, messenger sequence, okay? You can send a scheduled message later on um and then use a condition so let's say that um yeah i'm gonna and i'm gonna build a new flow the next topic uh the next the next uh feature that i'm gonna show you is the conditions the conditions uh uh as element the condition element so let's go back here okay let's create a new flow session two condition element. So um, by the way, guys, do you have any questions so far? 
the flow. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, I have I have received a question here. Uh, um, uh, here here's the flow, guys. I'm I'm gonna show you how you can share a flow really easily. Um, go back to your flow. What you can do is click share. So this is the share a flow link. So this is the share a flow link. Um, I'm gonna click share. And then this is the flow sharing link. So what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to share it with all of you guys. Boom. Okay, check your chat, check the group chat, and then click the link that I have shared with you so that um, you can view how the flow was created as well. Okay, click the chat. I uh, click click the link that I have shown you or I have shared with you in the chat. You can replicate the flow if you want. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, so and any questions so far before we before we uh, go to the conditions? Um, did you were were you able to catch um? Were you able to catch the uh, how we built the flow or or the, the flow process or the process how to uh, how to build a survey using chatbot? No question so far. Do you have any question about that or any any portion of that um, discussion where you find it difficult or you need more clarification? Hello. Hey, Should uh, we proceed? No, no, you good. Can you send the one that you just got done with the other one? The other one? With the survey. Uh, okay, the survey. Sample messenger survey. I, okay, so I, I think, did I share the wrong bot? Did I share the wrong flow? Yeah, you did the one with the pet. Uh, oh, the one with the pet? Oh, no, my bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'm gonna share another one. I think this, yeah, I, I guess I got the wrong flow. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm gonna share the link now. Okay, hope I got this right this time. Okay, let me double check. Yeah, <laughs> this is the correct flow now. All right, let's proceed. Let's proceed now to our condition. Okay, so uh, our topic now is conditions. How we can use conditions on our flow to um, to personalize a certain message um, to our subscriber. Example: A subscriber ha have a had have an option for this. They wanted or or example on our flow. We have a subscriber with low budget and we have a subscriber with high budget. Um, how are we going to send a message that is relevant to the, to the choices that we have made on our flow? So um, that is where conditions come in because we can send a personalized message depending on the choices of our subscriber. So the more data that we have from our subscriber, the more we would be able to um, um, build our flow that best fits the 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 um the persona that our that that we got from our subscriber. So let's just say, um, hello, hello. Um, I'm going to give you a more helpful. Uh, let's say I'm going to give you uh, a house that best, that best fits your budget. Yeah. Hello, username. I'm going to give you a house that best fits your budget. And after that, um, use a condition here. Okay, we are gonna use a condition. Okay, let's just first um, 
um, use any of the conditions and then we are going to use a custom variable here. And then for the custom variable, let's choose the budget custom variable add to the condition. So session two budget contains what? So if we go back to our choices, okay, if we go back to our choices, this is our flow. We have uh, we have provided the choices here, 100K to 200K, 200K to 500K, and then 500K and up. So let's just say um, if the budget contains 100, it means that they are low budget, right? So if this is true, okay, low budget, okay. And then let's add another condition here so you can nest your condition so if it is if the if the if the budget or if the custom variable contains 100 send low budget but if it is not 100 let, we are going to filter more the data here if it is not 100 um budget let's modify the i uh, let's add the uh, uh let's use the the session two custom variable uh, so session to budget custom variable. So if if it can if it contains two hundred, if it contains two hundred, we are going to send middle mid middle budget. And lastly, since we have only three choices, then then by default, the last one here is high budget. Okay, so that's how you use conditions. So if you have more than uh, more than three, then you can add another filter here. So you can add more filter. Let's just say I'm gonna add another filter here, condition. Add another one. Um, oh no, we are not going to use tags. We are going to use uh, session two budget custom variable contains 500. Ah no, end up. Because the 500, the 500, I think the 500 keyword here is used by our second session as well, or it's the second choice. So we are not going to use that. Yeah, 500 is on the second choice. So if we use 500, it will trigger on the second option as well. So let's use up, U-P, up. Okay, I'm going to use up. If it contains up, this is high budget, big budget. And then um, for the, the message, meaning, sorry, we don't have a house that fits your budget. Sorry, we don't have a house that fits your budget. And then we are going to just um, go back here. We are going to go back to the top of our flow. Ah, oh no, I think this is bad. We, we should not do this because it will, it will create an infinite loop. We should first create a quick reply here go back go back and then go back there and then go back go back and then go back in here as well and then go back And then we are going to do the same uh, quick reply here. Okay, great. We are now going to test our um, condition uh, condition element. So basically, um, just to uh, give you a, a better explanation. So we have a welcome message here. And then for the next message, we are going to filter out or we are going to have a condition 
um, we are going to send our second message conditionally depending on the answer of the previous user. So session two contains budget. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we are going to save this. We should save this and then we are going to test our flow. Um, I forgot to add a keyword because I like to use keyword as a trigger because it is easy. It's easier to trigger our flow or to, to test our flow using keywords. So um, flow three, that is my keyword. A okay, flow three. So I accidentally rearranged my flow here. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, flow, 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 and then flow. Let's go back to Messenger and then let's uh, trigger our keyword flow three. Hello, Calvin. I'm gonna. I'm going to give you a house that best fits your budget. So as you can see, um, the system sent us middle budget. Why? Why did the send the system give us middle budget? Because um, during the first survey, I have answered two hundred to five hundred k. So let's if if you can recall, if you can recall here. Um, yeah. All right. So if you can recall on the previous survey, this is the budget that I have entered. So this is the middle budget that we set on the flow. So that's why the message that the user, ha that the system has given us is middle budget. Okay. So what you can do is instead of sending middle budget, you can, you can actually add, um, you can actually use a carousel here and then you can display houses or middle budget houses here middle 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 uh, middle budget houses in there uh, that best fits the price point that the user has has indicated on the survey so that's another use case so you can basically add three carousels here carousel a group of houses for high budget a group of cars a group of houses inside a carousel for the middle and a group of houses on your carousel for your low budget house so that's a use case that you can uh, you can do using conditions yeah so let's let's uh, add another survey here let's trigger another survey flow 2 flow so, so let's trigger flow two. And this time we are going to change our input. We are going to change our input. What is your email? I'm going to give my email. And then what is your phone number? I'm going to give my phone number. And then for the, um, okay, let me, let me check my phone first. Okay, so, all right, everything is working well. I'm gonna use this. And then for the budget, let's change the budget to 500K and up. That would become my budget. And then, got it. And then the, the summary of the, the, the flow. Okay, great, so this is correct. I'm gonna click yes. And yeah, so the, the survey ends there. Okay, and then we are going to test another flow, this flow that we have created with conditions. So since this is a separate flow, we can actually use this to trigger, to, uh, to send a message, a separate message to our subscriber, uh, maybe, maybe three hours later, or maybe four hours later, or eight hours later, as long as we, it is within the 24-hour window. Remember the messenger policy? Um, you can only send messages to your subscriber within the span of 24-hour window. So we can actually add a, a, what we call this, a messenger sequence, wherein we can delay 
um, the sending of message in a specific hour or, or, or we can send a specific delay example, three hour delay, five hour delay before we send this specific message, our second message or our follow up message. So uh, let's say that we are now going to trigger our follow up message, which is flow three. And it will give our users um, the, the budget house that fits their budget. So as you can see, the budget now is change. Big budget. So as I have said earlier, instead of sending a big budget um, uh, um, uh, 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 text, a text message, you can actually send a carousel, a carousel or a group of images that, that, re that reflects the the budget that the user has um, that that uh, that is preferred by the user. So you can send carousel here instead. Okay. Now, um, since I have shown you how you can create a condition, I'm going to show you how we can send that condition later on. So. Um, I'm first going to show you or share with you this one so that you can review as well how this is built. I'm going to copy the sharing link, the flow sharing link. And I want you to click on that link and, link and then study how this flow was created. Flow with conditions. Conditions. Okay. So that is the link, everyone. I have already sent the flow with conditions link on the chat, on, the, on our chat group, group chat. You can click that and then you can study or you can check how it was created. You can study that one. Okay, now um, I'm gonna show you how you can create a sequence of message, okay? Um, our next topic is creating a message sequence. So this will become our last topic for tonight. Um, tomorrow we have we will have more more in depth um, discussion about chatbot flow. Uh, before we end, I'm going to show you how you can send a uh, messenger sequence and how you can add a messenger sequence on your flow. So let's create a messenger sequence. Go to Facebook and Instagram, and then go to chat sequence. Okay, so this is our chat sequence. Go to chat sequence, and after doing that, we are going to create a new messenger sequence. Okay. Click create new. All right, so this is how you can create a messenger sequence. So in my case, I am going to send um, only one message. Sorry about that. Only one message. You can basically create, or you can basically send a chain of messages uh, to your subscriber. Uh, just just uh, configure the interval between each, each message. So let's just say that survey follow up with condition. So this is my um, sequence one. So I'm going to send this example. I'm going to send this after one hour. So this is the timing. Um, after, after the subscriber have uh, interacted with the flow, I'm going to send this sequence after one hour, and then I'm going to configure what flow I am, am I going to send. So select station two condition element, and then select your text here. And then I am not going to use a message tag. So because my use case is, does not fit the message tags that are available in Facebook, so I'm not going to use a message tag. Um, anyway, I am sending this within the 24-hour window, so it is very, very safe uh, to send this message. Okay, so I don't have to use a tag. Okay, you can add a message here. You can add another message after, let's say, after, after two hours, okay? Let's just say after two hours. After two hours, you are going to send a message number two. And you can add another message here. But in my case, I'm not going to add another message. So I'm going to delete that. I'm, I'm only going to use or I'm, I'm only going to send a single message using the sequence. Go to next step, add the name, and then click Save Chat Sequence.
So after saving my chat sequence, what I'm going to do is I am going to edit my flow again, the first flow, the survey flow. I'm going to edit that. Save again, go, go back to our flow. Facebook and Instagram, um, chat bot flow builder, go there. And then I'm going to go back to my sam sample messenger survey. And on the sample messenger survey, um, <clears throat> I will send the, or for all those subscribers who have completed the survey, okay, this one. So this is the end of my survey, right? This is the end of my flow. Every sir, everyone who have completed my survey, I am going to send a follow-up message using the sequence that I have recently created. So to do that, you are going to add an action element. So right-click, create an action element, and then you can attach your action element actually here. And then um, messenger sequence, and then add the subscriber to the messenger sequence that we have created, which is this one, survey follow-up with conditions, okay? This is a valid flow. I can now save this. Another way to create or to add a, a, a condition is to do this. This is also valid. This is also okay. Okay, so again, um, this is only applicable for action, guys. Huh? This is only this is only applicable for action element. Okay, so this is an action element. Um, for action element, you can actually do either this. Okay, you can do that. The action element will be applied to to the output. It will be applied here. Or you can do this. It's the same thing, guys. It is the same thing. Okay. All right. That's the same. I'm going to save this. So yeah, that's basically it. That's how you can add your subscriber to the sequence. So I am going to test this. Let's test our flow one more time. And then I'm going to show you how you can review if indeed your subscriber has been um, scheduled to send, uh, has been included on your um, chat sequence. So let's trigger um, flow two. So this is our survey flow. Let's trigger our survey flow. And then we are going to complete our flow. So I'm going to begin the survey. Add the email as usual. Add the phone number next. Add the phone number. And after that, select what, what type of house. Okay, after that, the budget of the house. This time I'm gonna use low budget, 100K to 200K. And after that, the review of our flow. And then we are going to confirm this. We're gonna say yes. So because we have said yes, um, it means that our user now, our Facebook user, will be included on our sequence. So that's uh, what it would do. All right. So um, if all things went well, um, the user should now be included on our sequence. And three hours from now, did I, did I get that right? No, I think one hour. One hour from now, um, the, the message with conditions will be sent to our specific subscriber. So how do we know? How do we confirm that the subscriber is indeed um, um, included on our messenger sequence? So it's easy to do that. You can just view your chat sequence report. So go back to uh, your MMIO dashboard and then go, go to Facebook and Instagram. Go to um, chat sequences. Go to, go to chat sequences. And after that, click the report. Oh, I have created two conditions here, uh, two, two um, chat sequences. Okay, so this is the report. Okay, so this is the button that you are going to click in order for you to, to check if the subscriber has been included on the sequence. 
So click this button, and as you can see, um, we have uh, a message here. So don't worry if you have two messages here. Um, only one message will be sent because uh, MMIO have a system where in we prevent double sending of messages. We prevent that. Um, um, we we have uh, we have a built-in protection to, uh, to 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 prevent double sending of messages. So it's okay. Don't don't worry about that. So it means that our subscriber is now um, um, is now in our ch chat sequence. So that's how you can confirm that um, your subscriber is indeed included on your chat sequence. So one hour from now, it is scheduled. Flow with condition will be sent to that subscriber. And then since that sp specific subscriber have completed our flow, we have the data to actually give what specific, um, what specific, um, um, what we call this, what specific, uh, uh, budget or type of uh, budget of house that we are going to show to that subscriber. All right. So that marked the end of our lesson. So I'm going to take questions now. Do you have any questions so far? Hello, everyone. Um, uh, our was was the discussion um, clear enough? Hello. Oh, oh. On the, um, it was good, uh, Colin, but on the, um, uh, what can I say, on the conditions, yeah. uh, hopefully even tomorrow, if we can do like a, um, even a very simple, create the, uh, uh, like the survey, um, like the last things that what you did, the last two things that what you did, and we can build like a, a simple, you know, a, a, a simple flow um i got it and i see it but i'm trying to like to piece it together in instances on how to you know sure case sure. uses yes um so like build this flow um and then in this case use the condition to, to make this everything that what you did it is there because we had so many the different flows, but I get it. Um, and I know if I go back and continue to look at it over and over again, I'll get it. But hopefully while we got you here right now, while you just said maybe tomorrow, you sure. could, you know, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but sure, thank sure. You. Yeah, so um, creating, creating a condition would really uh, would really matter depending on the data that you have on your subscriber. So for the conditions, okay. we, we have a lot of options. Um, we uh, On our condition, we only used the custom variable type, but you can, you can actually add more, um, you can actually filter more, uh, you can actually have more filters for your subscriber. Let's explore the the what what the conditions what what filters are available for our condition. So if you go back here and the the conditions, um, go to the choices. We have a tag, so we can filter um, our subscribers. We can send a message conditionally based on what tag are applied to our subscriber. For so example, if the subscriber have a buyer tag, then we can send an upsell. If the subscriber did not have a buyer tag, then we can send a coupon so that they are uh, they they are enticed to buy from our store. So um, last interaction time. So example, I want to send a message to our, to our subscriber, but I want to make sure that I am only sending to the subscriber who interacted with my page within the span of 24 hours just to be safe with messenger policy. So I can condition that I can I can I can create a condition with the last interaction time, uh, and then just make sure that uh, when you do this, uh, you can add within or outside the twenty four hour rule, um, and then gender you can actually send a a a, a message specific message depending on the gender of the subscriber. So for the name, example, if a, if a subscriber contains a specific keyword on the name, then you can send a specific message to the subscriber. And then for the variable, 
Um, I have already shown you how you can add variables here. I, how, you, how you can um, send a condition depending on the variable or, or, or the data that have uh, been that the user has provided on our custom variables. So uh, session uh, condition one, if if the data contains 100, meaning that is the first, the 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 lower budget because that this 100 we got this from our from our from our flow, uh, which is here. If we go back to our flow here, yeah. So we got that here on our questions. We are the one who who built this. So since this flow, this message contains 100, yeah. So that's that's where it came from. Okay, so um, I will be able to discuss more tomorrow, right? So by the way, guys, what um, what do you want me to discuss tomorrow? So thank you, thank you, um, John, for uh, for your suggestion. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna build a really simple flow tomorrow just to just to uh, just to make things very clear. And what else? What what else do you want me to discuss tomorrow? Because in my um, in my mind. Yeah, yeah, sure. So go, Sorry, go ahead. You, you go ahead first. Yeah, in my mind, uh, I want to discuss tomorrow about um, HTTP. How we can build a how how we can create how we can get data, submit data using HTTP request. Example, you want to integrate with Zapier. Example, you want to integrate with Publi Connect or with um, Int Integromat. You can push data or uh, and then um, and then. You can actually get data from your CRM, example WordPress, uh, using HTTP. So that's what I what that's what uh, I plan to discuss tomorrow. So what else? What else do you want me to discuss tomorrow? You're just curiously asking: Are we going to go through the ones for Instagram, or is it very similar? Actually, it's very similar because Instagram, um, the way Instagram was, uh, the way Instagram bot was built, it is modeled. We, it, it is modeled in Messenger. So um, the, the only difference is there are no message tags. You cannot use message tags in Instagram. And there are no bot persona. There is no bot persona. And then um, quick replies, you are limited with quick replies and the buttons. But anything else is the same. So for the Instagram, there is no get started, but there is, is still a keyword trigger. Um, but there's still conditions there. The way we built uh, the way we built the the survey, it would be most likely similar to 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 message to to Instagram. It's 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 basically almost the same with very with very few limitations. Okay. So once we master how to use the messenger marketing or the messenger chatbot, then Instagram chatbot would be easy peasy. It is, it is like elementary. So once we have finished finished college, we have got we got our degree, then the elementary things would be very basic for us. So once we master the messenger bot, Instagram would be very very basic. How do you integrate with the e-commerce store? That is a very good question. So actually, it's very, very e easy to do that. What you can do is just create a button. So example, you have a text here. You have a text here. You can add a button here and then example, buy now. And then for the button type, just search for e-commerce e URLs, e-commerce URLs e-commerce URLs and after that select your e-commerce store or or the link of your products actually uh, we have not created an e-commerce store for this specific one yet but let me let me uh, get the specific store let me get these the the another another page that used messenger I, I mean another page that is connected to my e-commerce so let me let me review first, which page was that? World best tools page. So I'm gonna use this page. This is connected to my, um, this e-commerce store. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to activate this page, world best tools page. 
go to chatbot and then world best tools page okay this one i'm going to activate this and then since this is the page that is connected to my e-commerce store i'm going to call this e-com connection e-commerce connection so it's really easy to connect your chatbot example you have a text here okay buy from my store and then add a button here buy now button um, search for e-commerce urls and then select select the products that you want to include here so as you can see if you want to redirect the user to your main store okay use this use this if you want to redirect your um, users or your customers to your categories to your product categories then use the category here or if you want to redirect them to your product then use the product urls here as example i'm going to use this one google t-shirt click that confirm changes and boom there you have your connection okay so was that clear okay got it so yeah what else do you what do you what what else do you want to learn so that um, I will prioritize that tomorrow. I will prioritize discussing what you want to learn tomorrow. Hello, you guys. Can also do, uh, uh, go over some of the things on the um, uh, the uh, the growth thing, like icebreakers. Oh yeah, um, I forgot to discuss that about. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take note of that. I'm going to take note of that. I'm going to make sure that uh, we are going to discuss that tomorrow. Growth tools, okay. uh, the entry points, which is the get started, the get started, the keywords, FAQs. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of features here that um, this one. Yeah, the persistent menu, welcome message, icebreakers, get started, keywords, chatbot defaults. I am going to discuss this tomorrow. So uh, we have a lot to discuss tomorrow. I will, I think I'm gonna um, have a faster pacing tomorrow. I will I will uh, do a more um, generalized um, approach so that we can discuss all of that uh, feature in one in one session. Any more, any more, uh, no, uh, any more topics that you want me to, to, to clarify or discuss? Okay. By the way, guys, as a closing remark, just to get you excited, I want you to notice one thing. Have you noticed this? Notice what's on the menu. What did you see in the menu? Hello? Are you still there? Yeah. We are here. So did you we see the, the one that I was pointing to? It, it's not rolled. I don't see it in my account. Yeah. Me yeah. Too. Yeah. Because I am the admin. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, okay. I, 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 I only have the access. So I have not rolled out it to all users yet. So only I have the access for this one. So I'm just going to give you a quick preview. So um, once you have also mastered how to use the chatbot for Messenger, then creating a chatbot for Google would be easy peasy for you as well. Easy peasy. That's why I prioritized um, messenger marketing or mastering the chatbot because building a chatbot in Google My Business is very, very similar to um, building a chatbot on Google. So let me just give you a quick overview of the one that I have built here. Okay, I have built this. Uh, this, is, this would be available on my Google My Business. <clears throat> Yeah, sounds familiar. I mean, looks familiar, right? Does this ring a bell, the interface? You have a text, you have a quick reply, you have a buttons, 
you have you have your carousels you have um yeah basically the same thing so actually this is ready the feature is already there um we are just gonna finish a lot uh, 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 more more things here um this is just a preview thing that you need to uh, uh, I, I want you to look forward into because um, Google My Business is also a huge opportunity because Google My Business has just started. Um, this is basically on, on a, a very early stage. Google My Business is the way that messenger marketing was on the early stages where it was three years ago, where you are not restricted with the 24-hour policy. You can basically send anytime, any promotional message on Google My Business. And plus, once you send a message in your subscriber, it will it will show up on their phone as a notification, as a as a push notification. That's really amazing. Um, if you send a promotional wow. message, it will be published as a push notification on your phone, on Android phone, on iPhone as well. So you can be assured that each message that you send to your subscriber, even if it is promotional, even if it's outside the 24 hour window, it will have a high open rate because it is it is built in on the the chat the chat message or the chat app is built in on every android phone for the for the iphone it is not built in but if they install google maps or install any of the google apps it will be included uh as well if they install for ios for 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 iphone users but for android users um it will be a native it will be a native um, um, app, so it, it will be published as a push notification, and yeah. So and it has no restrictions, right? No, no moment? restrictions. No restrictions as of the moment. Well, there is thirty days. You can send uh, any messages, any promotional message within the span of thirty days. Actually, that's a very huge. That's still a huge leeway compared to messenger wherein you can only send within 24 hours very restrictive right so for messenger um well if you send the message it will be published i think um there is also a push notification but not as powerful as or not not as not as um, vi visible as the push notification that is triggered by google but how do you get people to be a subscriber on Google? Well, um, there are a lot of entry points, just like a messenger. Um, first is the, um, did you notice on Google Maps wherein you search for a certain establishment and then you are going to see the, the let, me, let me show you. No, this, this is the, interesting. This is, this is on its early stages. Let me go to google.com. Let's say I want to um, I want I want to eat burger, burgers near me. Okay, burgers near me. As you can see, these are the businesses that are registered in Google My Business. Mm -hmm. This one, okay. So if they use um, chatbot or if they use Google Chatbot, there will it will appear there would appear a little chat here chat with us a, a little chat button here a little chat button in here so you can basically click the chat button and then you can order you can basically order your menu or your you can it is very amazing for e-commerce store owners who are example who have their business businesses listed in google um, you can actually uh, have your subscriber chat on google and then they can buy directly from your uh, e-commerce store or they can reserve something or they can, yeah, you can do do most likely a, uh, the example of surveys, bookings, um, in, get, the, get their emails, get their phone numbers. You can basically do that inside here because currently uh, in order for you to get the subscriber data or in order for you to send messages to people who have searched your business on Google, you need to have a landing page, right? You need to have a landing yeah. page. And in that landing page, you need to have 
a an opt-in wherein you will reward your subscriber. Hey, give your email to me and I will give you a free PDF. That's the standard way of doing things, right? That's that has been what we have been doing for all these years. But Google Chat would change that. Because with Google Chat, you can actually once they click your chat window, even if you don't get their email, you can message them on their mobile phone within 30 days. Anytime. Oh. Great, right? That's yeah. that's a very exciting news. I mean, technology is really so how changing. Act- how do you activate your Google G- GMB message? Well, on Marketing Master IO, all, all the subscriber have to, all the businesses have to do is create an agent, go to agents, create an agent. After you create an agent, <clears throat> like this one. Add the details here. After adding the details, you are going to attach your flow. Create your flow, attach the flow, and after that, launch your agent. And then, boom, that's it. After you launch your agent, um, it would be visible on on uh, on search pages, uh, on links. Yeah, that's 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 a very exciting technology that we that. I believe would be very helpful for businesses and agencies who want to help um, local businesses to to become more um, to, to become more effective on their marketing. Um, so we are now not limited on just just messenger or 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 inside the grasp of Zuckerberg. <laughs> we are we can basically have another avenue to communicate with our customers using Google Search. Uh, yeah. So within a few days, we'll be able to launch this. What we need to add now is on Messenger, we have live chat, right? On Messenger, we have live Mm -hmm. chat. Yeah. We are going to add live chat also on Google so that you can chat with those people who message your page. So the first interaction would be with your bot, and then they can request an agent. If they click request an agent, you will be notified that there's a user that needs your attention and then you can go to your mobile phone and then chat with them with uh, using your mobile phone yeah so for this is uh uh advantages for android users because well google owned android so it is native you you won't have to install any additional app it will be native on your android phone but for ios users you would need to install google businesses app uh, All right, Collins. Yeah, Collins. Sure. Why I don't? There are four of us here. Myself, Clarence. I live by faith, and John. Sure. Uh, why not you activate for four of us to try beta testing? Beta testing. You want to activate this? Yeah. Well, it will yes, be activated. There are four idea. of us. On it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it be activated within a few, maybe two weeks or yeah. But actually, that's a good idea. Yeah. Beta test with four person anyway. Yeah, and then your, we will see you tomorrow anyway. Give me your email addresses. I will I will send you the I will I will activate your access to this feature. Um I don't know. I currently don't know your just just your no, send me in private to for privacy uh, purposes. <laughs> send to me in private, chat to me in private your your login email, your MMIO login email so that you can try this out. Uh, or what we can do is we send you a support ticket. Great. That would be another, a better way. Actually, that's a better way. Support ticket and then ask for early access to the Google My Business so that you can play around with it. Maybe you okay, can... Okay, give us a quote. Maybe you can um, suggest more features or you can see something that, hey, I think this thing, this it's better that if we add, place it here instead of here, place it in there or yeah, that would be very appreciated. Okay. Can we use this uh, code, uh, GMB beta? Well, just create a support ticket. <laughs> it's so, still the same thing. Okay. Okay. So uh, one, two, three, four, we'll be creating a support ticket to you requesting for uh, GMB beta. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Um, GMB, so we can try uh, it tomorrow and then we come back to tell you uh, what we face as 
beta test this anyway. That would be that would be highly appreciated. That would be pretty good. And Colin, what I what I did when I first found out about <laughs> excuse me, Google, you know, MB, I searched local, local. I went local, LA, Los Angeles, because I live in the United States here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I just searched. And then on your mobile device, I found a few that were the chat came up because on mobile, that's when it really yeah. it, it yeah, showed. Yeah. So yeah. Correct. I went into the, I went into the, the chat bot. And so for me, just as a business um, strategy, and this is for everybody else, as a business strategy, um, once you find anybody that is um, uh, running ads, if they're running ads, you know, running ads and they don't have a chat, but I mean, they're, you know that they're spending money. So they're already yeah. spending money. So yeah. you can offer Google My Business chat bots and show them the uh, the value and the benefits of it. You're running ads, just, hey, click message us and then, you know, show them how we can build their email uh, uh, data. You know, all the other benefits in there. That That's, really going interesting. Was, That's going to yes, be huge. That's going to be huge. Yes, it is. going to be huge. It would help a lot because even if, even right now, go to your mobile phone, search for a business. It's very, it's very rare, extremely rare to see a business that have a chat widget. Extremely rare. It, I searched, it took me, uh, and I literally searched, it took me an hour to find one. So if you, if <laughs> right, you, right. Here's the thing, just like uh, texting and uh, all the other new trends that happen, if you're at the forefront of it, and Correct. helping providing these services, it's it's good. So I'm glad that MMIO, um, we we do have it. I'm I'm grateful. Yes. Of course, this is a very big opportunity for for us to. Uh, there are a lot of businesses that are not using this because this is basically new, very very new. Um, here in the Philippines, I have searched and searched for businesses that use this. Very rarely did I. I, I think I only saw one, and then. What's ridiculous is they don't have a chatbot in there. They don't, their automation did not even work. <laughs> so um, <laughs> for, for a business owner, uh, I mean, for, for us, if you are an agency, this is a very huge opportunity to, to reach out to your local businesses that, hey, this is what we can do for you. Um, it, you can have a lot more engagement. Example, you, have, you, you, can, you can have, there are a lot of people who are searching for your business that are wasted because they they search for you they search for you in Google and then that's it they 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 don't leave a message or they don't leave uh, 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 anything you won't you won't be able to communicate with them again so there are businesses that have maybe a thousand searches for day per day they get they get a thousand searches per day what if just fifty percent of those searches chats with the user? So it, it, it means that you would have five hundred new subscriber every day. And for one month, how many subscribers would you have? That is free marketing. Actually, you won't have to spend an ad to send a message to them. All you have to do is send a message broadcast in Google, and that's free marketing. That's the yeah, value of that is is pretty huge. Colin, yeah. I get I get. 18,000 to 21,000 views per month. Views per That's month? why I didn't know. Google search? Yeah. Join, uh, GMB. Via oh. GMB. My Google performance is 21,000 searches per month. Oh, my God. Towards me. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> that's huge. Yeah. Well. So that's why I didn't know about this chatbot thing. That's why I want to test it out. Well, um. Give me maybe two days. I will give you access. Tomorrow, I will just uh, prepare your access. And then um, after that, maybe the next day, if you go to your account, if you log in again, you would have the Google My Business um, icon. Create an agent. Create a chatbot. Attach the chatbot to the agent. You have a test URL. Test, click the test URL and then go to your Android or mobile phone, iOS. And then test it out. And after that, mm-hmm. after you have tested your agent, you are going to request verification. Once Google team has verified your agent that the agent information you have you have provided are all correct, and then your agent is not 
bogus agent. It is not, you know, scamming people. Um, then it will be approved. Once the agent is very verified and it, it is safe to go to public, it has no, it does not contain any spam. It is not scam. It is not a scam. It is a verified, legitimate tool that really helps businesses. Then it will be launched like this one. It is launch. Once that is launch, it it will be available in public, in Google searches. Mm -hmm. In so currently, I I have not listed. I I haven't listed yet on Google search. What I have launched for now is Google Map. Uh, I mean, is is website for MMIO. Uh, the 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 searches is still ongoing. The the Google search um, launch is still ongoing. Um, but the the other other um, other entry point which is i'm gonna i don't have time to discuss right now what are the different entry points of google maybe after lunch i can i can have another three-day session all focused on google my business maybe that's a better way to to, yeah. to have a a, a, a a better adaptation you can adapt better to the feature so yeah i think it uh that's enough time for for our discussion so it is already almost 1 a.m. here in the Philippines. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for um, attending. I hope you learned a lot on our session. Oh, yeah. And tomorrow we are going to discuss more. And then I, I took note of the things that you have, um, um, I have suggested. And we will discuss that. Hopefully, I'll be able to discuss everything that you want me to discuss tomorrow. And even if I did it, I want I I I was I, I'm not able to discuss those things. This will not be our last session. So yeah. Good night, everyone. Um, good morning here in the Philippines, and I hope I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Okay. So bye bye. All right. Thanks, Colin. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye.